All right, ladies and gentlemen, let's go ahead and do it. Let's go ahead and get into this story about Candace Owens because boy, I hate to say it, but I told you guys this was coming. When I covered the confrontation between Candace Owens and Rabbi Shmuley, I told you it would only be a matter of time before the Daily Wire would continue to allow Candace to have the rhetoric that she had. And her rhetoric was somewhat mild, somewhat, we'll get to one part that wasn't, but somewhat mild uh, compared to others like rhetoric, compared to my rhetoric uh, about the state of Israel, her rhetoric was somewhat mild, right? It didn't take much, but I told you this was coming. And here we are. So it was announced earlier this morning. It was the first thing I saw when I woke up that the Daily Wire has decided to fire Candace Owens. Uh, They have decided to part ways with her. And I think we all know what this is about. I want to get into this article here from the guardian first, because there's something mentioned here that I think some people may have forgotten about. Candace Owens leaves the daily wire site amid Israel and anti-Semitism tensions. The far right commentator, Candace Owens left the right wing daily wire website amid tensions over her alleged anti-Semitism and opposition to U S funding of Israel's war in Gaza. So again, Her criticism was more so about the funding. So she was continuing the same, the same principle that she had about funding the war in Ukraine. So I told you guys before, when you change the country, some of these people that were against funding the Ukraine war were totally fine with funding Israel, right? So she kept that same principle. And then also, she also had the criticism of the deaths of children in Gaza. Like she's been very vocal about that. But it's not like she came out and said Israel is a terrorist state. It's not like she attended any of the pro-Palestinian rallies like a lot of us have, you know, so it's it's not didn't even go to those extremes. But there was one piece that was mentioned on her show that I think could have also hit a button. It goes on to say here, Daily Wire and Candace Owens have ended their relationship, said Jeremy Boring, co-founder of the site with the right wing commentator Ben Shapiro, who has clashed with Owens and is a strong supporter of Israel and its actions in her own post. Owens, who hosted a commentary show for the site, said the rumors are true. I'm finally free. I'll show you that in just a second. This is the part here that I think some people may have forgotten about or maybe they didn't see that video. Owens has criticized U.S. support for Israel, but also mused about political Jews and a very small ring of uh, specific people who are using the fact that they are Jewish to shield themselves from any criticism. Remark Shapiro, absolutely disgraceful. Uh, That statement she actually gave in the video where she discussed the connection between Michael Jackson and Rabbi Shmuley and Kanye West. And she started to, you know, talk about what if there was this elite group of people in the entertainment business. So they obviously remembered that. So it's not just the comments, I guess, that she made about the children that have died. It's not just uh, the criticism she had about funding the war. It's also this comment as well. But that being said, I I still think her criticism was fairly mild uh, when you compare it to others' rhetoric. So Candace did actually confirm this on Twitter earlier today. She said, the rumors are true. I am finally free. If you would like to support my work, you can go ahead to CandaceOwens.com where you will be directed to my locals page, or you can give a gift at GoCandace.com. There will be many announcements in the week, the weeks to come. And what was really interesting, uh, this picture here, which is also part of the website. It's a picture of Candace Owens wearing a fila, a fila shirt, which is interesting. I'm like, is this from like the night? I haven't seen someone wear a fila shirt since like the nineties, maybe, maybe early two thousands. So that was interesting to me. But as you can see, she did confirm that they have parted ways. She's already asking people to support her at her locals page. She also went on to say, this is my personal YouTube page that I will be bringing the show back to after a brief hiatus. Please take a moment to subscribe to this new channel. Love all. So I 
clicked on this. She said this new channel. So let me show you what I saw. Um, so this is the channel that she shared. It has 1.48 million subscribers, 750 videos. Now, when I click on the about section, it says join September 22 of 2015. So this isn't a new channel. This is a channel that she already had. I don't know why she referred to it as a new channel, but long story short, Candace has somewhere else to go. It's not like she, like she's done with the daily wire and she has no other outlet or any other platform to go to. Right now, there was a segment that she released before all this happened. So shout out to Hotspot for capturing uh, this clip here. It says, Candace Owens has reportedly been fired from the Daily Wire. This was her last segment. I have two clips from this. Listen to what she said here. In a few weeks, I will be out to Israel and I will be out to Gaza. And I will be able to report to you guys what it is that I actually see. But I also want to say this because it's so important. Let me pause. Okay. So she was supposed to take, I'm assuming she's still taking this trip, but she was supposed to take a trip to Israel and to Gaza. And she was going to report from those locations. So she can still take that trip. I'm sure she can still report maybe through her own YouTube channel, maybe also rumble and maybe through locals, but not through the daily wire. So it's interesting that this removal happened before that trip happened. Let me let her finish here. I am team God. Okay. I'm team God. I do not fear the media. I do not fear journalists. I do not fear APAC. I don't fear big pharma. What I actually fear is God. I think that one day we are all going to have to account for the things that we have done and the things that we have said. And I want to make sure that I am not a person that is parroting lies. The fear of losing your job, encouraging some people to spit out lies, I don't think that works in the end, right? I think you, you've got to check your priorities. And so with that said, I want to thank everybody who has been on this journey with me, people that have supported me. I especially want to thank all of the Jewish people that have been in the comments saying how outraged they are. And I know that it is especially difficult for you guys right now because you are being smeared, you know? I mean, I am, I'm not gonna go away. I'm going to use my God-given voice to talk about the things that are important for me. And I'm just asking to be left alone, or at least- Notice she said she's not going away. Again, this was her last segment. Just report the truth. Ladies and gentlemen, unfortunately, that is all the time that we have for today, but don't worry because we will see you tomorrow for a brand new episode. Okay, that was one part of the clip. Here's another piece of that clip that I also think uh, is important as well. Listen to this piece here. Guys, I'm going to be honest with you because everybody's noticing it. Every single political commentator in America, every single one of them knows this, that if you do not step out and say things that are radically pro-Israel, or if you are too quiet on certain narratives and they want you to be radically pro-Israel, you can lose everything. That's the truth. That is a fact. I'm not, I'm not feeling like I need to hide from that anymore because, or be afraid to say it rather is a better way to say it because I've endured this for years. I'm just at the end of my rope. I, I have given so much rope here and I am just done with it. And apparently she was done with it because that was her last segment. So what was really interesting to me when I heard this news today is that all these years I heard Candace Owens talking about uh, the cancel culture on the left. And it just so happens the very people that actually canceled her, at least from the Daily Wire, were her comrades on the right. The Daily Wire, Ben Shapiro, they're the ones who canceled Candace Owens, not the left. And this goes back to something I've been saying for a while. We're going to dig a little bit deeper into this, but it's the fact that when it comes to free speech, when it comes to the cancel culture, they're really, it's really not partisan. They make it seem like it's partisan, but it's not because the Republican party and the democratic party, they both participate in cancel culture, just about different issues. 
and different social issues, actually, right? We're going to take a look back at a statement from Candace when she was at a hearing confronting white supremacy, because I want to make a point here. I want to show something to you. This is years ago. Listen to what she says, because something about Candace, she, she had this way of telling some truths, but missing the connection to the overall you know, substance. Listen to this. To try to assign reality or any meaning to a homicide, a homicidal maniac writing a manifesto, which, by the way, let the record show, also stated Spyro the Dragon, the child's cartoon, as a source of inspiration. He also cited Nelson Mandela as a source of information. I don't think, I don't think that Nelson Mandela has inspired mosque shootings. You can correct me if you think I'm wrong. You, are, you would rather assign meaning to a homicidal maniac than to actually address that I said to the things that I said today that are actually harming black America. Number one, father absence. Number two, the education system and the illiteracy rate. Illegal Pause. Now, those things that she mentioned in reference to the black community, father absence, education, illiteracy, right? This is not to say that those are lies. These are issues that we do have to deal with in the black community. No one's saying those are lies. <laughs> okay. Here's the problem. Listen to this part after this. Let me go just a, a, back a little bit more because I'm going to show you how she misses the connection. One, father absence. Number two, the education system and the illiteracy rate. Illegal immigration ranks high. Abortion ranks high. White supremacy and white nationalism, if I had to make a list again of 100 things, would not be on it. This Pause. This is where Candace misses the connection. Because the examples that Candace just gave you Fathers not in the home, illiteracy rates, education issues, those are all tools of white supremacy. This is where this is how someone like Candace Owens was able to have a job at the Daily Wire. This is what I've continued to tell people. As long as she continued to support talking points that were anti-black, she was totally welcome at the Daily Wire. But the moment she tried to have talking points that criticized the state of Israel. That was a no, no, that was a bridge too far. You see Candace Owens role at the daily wire was to give a black face to white supremacy. You have to understand. And I've said this multiple times before the greatest tool of white supremacy is to get a black person to do it for you. And it's not just Candace Owens. It's not just black people on the right. There's black people who are liberals who also do this. Blackface high place. You've heard the saying before where people say not all skin folk or kin folk. This is very true. Because you see, her role was to make white people feel comfortable, white people who had those same views and opinions that Candace did about black people, the absentee fathers, poor education, illiteracy. Her role at the Daily Wire was to make white people feel comfortable with feeling that way and having those opinions about the black community. That's the black face for white supremacy. I'm assuming they're looking for another black face now, right? But the moment Candace Owens tried to do the same thing in reference to Israel, in reference to Zionism, in reference to claiming there's an elite group of people. Oh no. They said, you got to go. It was okay for her to demean black people but it was not okay for her to demean Israel. And this is what I want people to understand. That is not a Republican thing. That's not a Democrat thing. That is across the board. Candace Owens is realizing that now. Do I agree with people being removed? Do I agree with people being deplatformed? Absolutely not. And I stand by that. You don't have to watch those people. You don't have to watch them. <laughs> this is, is what it is. I didn't agree with it when it happened to Kim Iverson. I didn't agree with it when it happened to Katie Halper. I don't agree with that. 
But I want you to see what's really happening here. That Zionism is so powerful that it can just come in and pick people up, remove people from their jobs. That's how powerful this has become. So Candace went, has learned that she couldn't do that. She couldn't do that with Israel. She's standing by her principle of free speech. She's saying that she still supports free speech and this isn't right. But that shows the hypocrisy and both sides do this. The hypocrisy that has come from the right. I've talked about the hypocrisy that comes from the left on this show multiple times. There is hypocrisy that comes from the, the right as well in reference to this cancel culture. Don't believe me? Here's Mr. Ben Shapiro. Basically putting his foot in his own mouth. Now he's another one. He's part of the Daily Wire. He's a co-founder. He's one that really came out against cancel culture, right? Didn't he just record a rap song saying, I don't care if I offend you, right? So it's okay for them to offend anybody else in any other group, but you cannot offend Israel. You can't offend the Israeli government. You can't offend Israelis. You see the difference, people? Listen to this. The ability to make a mistake, I think, is is crucial, right? Now, number one, I, you know, I'm I'm not a big fan of apology culture in the sense that, mm -hmm. you know, unless you actually hurt a person, you should only apologize to people you've hurt. And I think that we're a society that basically suggests that you ought to apologize to the air. You should apologize to society at large. The society at large is not a person who hurts. It's it's a person you hurt who you apologize to. Yeah. Uh, and, and sort of the, the general notion that you can do offensive things and then people have the option not to watch you. Right. Obviously, that, you know, I think that that's, that's the best possible solution to a lot of these things. People have the ability to engage or not engage with your content. And I think that that's a better way of doing it than sort of putting secondary pressure on people who yeah. advertise or people who, who, who may engage with your content. Well, you shouldn't engage with this content because if you do that, then that makes you complicit or whatever that is. I just, I, I'm not a big fan of that sort of attitude generally. Um, mm -hmm. Pause that. Okay. We're going to get to the other timestamp here. So hold on to that piece right there. I'm going to go a little bit further because there's something, there's an example he gives here about the uncle, the racist uncle. Yeah. This part. Because it, it ex it's exposing some things. Local, you become abstractions to each other. I mean, the first thing that you said when we, when we saw each other is it's good to see you as a person, right? Not on a screen. Even the fact that we mostly interact with each other over screens is a certain level of abstraction. Being in person with somebody is, you know, there's no substitute for just sitting across a table from somebody or, or being in a community with somebody. That, that, that substitute doesn't exist by phone, doesn't exist by social media, it doesn't even exist by FaceTime. It doesn't. I mean, when, when, I, when I'm, you know, uh, traveling and I FaceTime my kids, that's not a substitute for being in the yeah, room with no. my kids. It's not even close to a substitute for being in the room, which is why I've tried to minimize my travel, right? And, and so I think that that's one of the things that we've, one of the methods of, of the growing authoritarianism that we've been talking about is the attempt to create an ersatz sense of solidarity with people through mechanisms that were not meant to promote solidarity. Well, long, long scale communication doesn't, it's not, it's better than nothing. Pay attention to this, guys. It's a hell of a lot worse than actually being with people and living with people and, and understanding those people, especially because, again, you give more grace to people that you actually know, right? Yeah. Like, like if, I've said this before, like, your uncle, you know he's a good guy, right? really good guy, and you know all the good things he's done in his life, and he tells a racist joke one time. Is he a racist or is he not a racist? And the answer is he told a racist joke one time, and it's bad that he told the racist joke, but maybe he's not a racist. You know him, and you can say, oh, that's Uncle Bob. You know, Uncle Bob, he says that kind of stuff sometimes, and I, I'll tell him that he shouldn't say that kind of stuff, but I know deep down he's not a racist. But if you see that guy on Twitter say the same thing, destroy his career, it's over for him, he's the worst person who's ever lived, we have to pile on him, because you don't, you don't know the guy. So how was that any different to what they just did to Candace Owens? You see how people take cancel culture and they use it to fit what their side or their party feels is correct. And that's Ben Shapiro talking about, well, if your uncle is racist or whatever, you tell him not to say those things. It's, it's not right, but you don't cancel him. You don't try to like remove his job. You don't try to take their career, but isn't that what he, what they just did? 
So you see, how was that any different from what Ben and Candace have complained about in reference to the left? Here's another one. Dave Smith captured this one. He said, posted without comment. Listen to this. And then you combine that with the cancel culture and you come up with something truly ugly. So as we'll see, again, I'm, I'm just foreshadowing because you need to know where I'm going here. Okay, the fact is that the cancel culture exists. It is extraordinarily ugly. It's particularly ugly for people on the left, actually, because if, if you're on the right, like I know conservatives are not interested in canceling other conservatives and they're not going to go along with this. If you're on the left. What? So here we go. There's Ben Shapiro telling you conservatives are not interested in canceling other conservatives. Conservatives. What just happened to Candace today? Mm hmm. Left. You probably will be canceled because your own crowd is going to flee from you screaming and running for the hills with their hair on fire the minute that you are called out as anything approaching a racist. That's the way that this works. But the left is going to claim that because Trump mentioned cancel culture at Mount Rushmore, it doesn't exist. Again, figment of your imagination. Gaslighting. And then you. So what you're seeing here, folks, and those of us at RBM, we've called this out before. The Republican Party doesn't believe in free speech. The Democratic Party doesn't believe in free speech. These, these are Ben Shapiro's own words. And by the way, Candace Owens has these words as well. So what this goes to show you once again is that cancel culture is an example of another issue that was used as a partisan tactic that is really not partisan at the end of the day. People may get canceled over different issues. The left may have their own social issues, but the right also has their own social issues. And what's really interesting is that this network, the Daily Wire, whatever, that was supposed to be a place for free speech. That was supposed to be anti-cancel culture. But I guess something was not mentioned at the very beginning at the birth of the Daily Wire, and that was, uh-oh, except for Israel. It's the same thing I told you before about identity politics. All politics is identity politics. There is no, this is something that only the Democrats do. The Republicans do it too. All of it is identity politics. My comrade Nick from RBN, he said this so beautifully. He said this so beautifully. Candace Owens spent years fear-mongering about cancel culture on the left only to get canceled by her friends on the right. Nick is killing it in this clip. Listen. Candace Owens was just fired from the Daily Wire after her critical coverage of Israel's genocide. I can't stress enough that Candace Owens was far from a radical on the Palestinian issue. At no point has Candace Owens ever affirmed Palestinians' right to self-defense against Israel. Also, at no point has Candace Owens ever labeled Israel as a terrorist state that doesn't deserve to exist because they don't. Candace Owens has taken the most moderate, tepid position on this genocide possible. She simply said that she weeps for dead Palestinian children the same way she weeps for any dead children, and she don't believe that American taxpayers should be funding such mass death. This is the very rational position that got her canceled by Zionists. Candace Owens has spent years fear-mongering over cancel culture on the left only to be canceled by her friends on the right. Guys, welcome to the Cancel Corner, the place where we keep track of all the things the left has killed unnecessarily. I'm so excited. Over the years, it feels like the woke nonsense has deleted so many things from our lives. Now, note, this was just 2021. <laughs> so that wasn't that long ago. Nobody was upset about it until everybody was upset about it. So we've got Aunt Jemima, Goya Beans, Mr. Potato Head, so many more innocent, inanimate objects that the left has said goodbye in recently, obviously in the midst of this uh, Cardi B feud. The left even tried to cancel me, Candace. It's just so sad. But of course, here at The Daily Wire, we had planned on that. I had already said, if we're going to cancel Candace, we have to be the ones to lead the army. We're in on the joke, people. Cancel Candace. So you guys see what was happening here? So the thing is, again, like back then she was saying the left is trying to cancel Candace when in the reality, it's the right who actually canceled you. <laughs> Ha 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 
I hope it's clear who the true traitors to this country are now, Candace. I hope this serve as a giant wake-up call to Americans. There is no bigger threat to the right of free speech and financial security of Americans than Israel and the ideology of Zionism. Nick is killing it with those hot spot uh, clips there. So you got to give a shout out there to Nick doing the damn thing. Uh, another thing that I want to mention uh, as well. I also think that unfortunately, because Candace Owens does not have a strong camaraderie with the African-American community, this is a time where if she did, I think, black people would be lining up to defend her and saying, what the fuck, right? But she doesn't have that because she spent years of her career demeaning us. And like I said, she would throw in things that if you look at the data, it was true. So she would throw in uh, stats that obviously were correct, right? But then she would follow that up with, this is not white people's fault. This is not because of white supremacy. She would totally push out the power dynamic, which is incredibly important, but that's how she got to be where she is. And that's what people have to understand. Candace knows this. She knew how to play this game. The Daily Wire would have never taken her on if she would have pointed out those power dynamics. And yes, we all know billionaires are a problem, but I think those of us also know that there is a power structure in this country. And if we can point out what's happening between Israel and Gaza, what do I always tell you? Who is in power at this point in time? It is Israel. I told you that is the final stage of European colonialism is for Israel to take over the rest of the region and create a greater Israel. You cannot leave that out. And because she would leave that out or omit it or say that it's not true, that's why the Daily Wire wanted her there. Again, the black face for white supremacy. And this issue with woke, there's something I want to show you here as well, because I, I want people to understand where that word really comes from. New words that aren't so new. The journalist Matthew Seed recently presented a five-part BBC series on the history of the term woke. African-American in origin, the word has entered the mainstream to describe being politically alert and vigilant, especially to racial prejudice and increasingly to all forms of social injustice. Most of us would guess that this word of recent coinage, that this word is of recent coinage, but Matthew showed that it first occurred in the lyrics of a 1938 song by the blues singer, Led Belly, real name, Huddy Led Better. His song about the Scottsboro Boys, nine black teenagers wrongfully accused of assault and sentenced to death, warns of the danger of a racially prejudiced justice system and concludes best stay woke. So what happened with that word is that once again, the Democratic Party found a way to co-op <laughs> I can't mention how many times I've, I've explained this, different examples. That was another thing that the Democratic Party found a way to co-op and to make it mean different things. So then the right actually started targeting the word woke and said, listen, this is going too far. They're coming after everything now. So I want you to understand the history and know where that word actually comes from. And I bring that up because a lot of times when people on the right do criticize that, they don't tell you the history of the word. So it's important that you know where it comes from and how the Democratic Party co-opted it and made it something different. Now, what was interesting is that Sauger actually released a, a video earlier today. Glenn Greenwald actually clipped this. So shout out to Glenn for this. Uh, Sauger is also speaking out against the Daily Wire and what they did. Now, this is interesting because Sauger does come from that side of things. <laughs> he comes from that side of things. He describes himself as a right populist, but these are people that he knows. Like he's familiar with these people. Listen to what Sauger said about Candace being fired. Episode. So as you can see, I mean, this has been a major source of tension inside the Daily Wire now for months and months and months. Uh, and I think, look, what, what what can we learn about this? I mean, first and foremost, it's a little bit hilarious, right? That this is what led to the uh, this is what led to the departure over at the Daily Wire. Like Candace, 
Look, whether you like her or not, she said a lot of things. She said a lot of controversial. She actually just did a whole segment about Brigitte Macron perhaps being a male. Uh, I haven't watched it. I haven't looked into it, just to be clear. So I don't know the merits or whatever that. But my point is that all of that, that was fine. And that never kicked up a hornet's nest. It was only... We pause. The reason why that was fine, and for the record, I'm not saying that it is fine. The reason why that was fine, Sauger, is because that goes with the narrative that the Daily Wire wants to have and accepts, and they approve of that type of narrative. So there's a difference there from her saying that and her criticizing the state of Israel. When she started critiquing Israeli war strategy in Gaza and talking about civilian casualties, did all of this come to the surface and frankly saying what I think are principled and more at, or at the very least principle principled within her framework of looking at war at Ukraine and at Israel adopting an America first strategy. It was only that clinging to that, which led to ba basically the breakup between her and this major company. Right. None of the criticism, some of the statements that she made about and, you know, whatever way you feel about this, but some of the statements that she made about George Floyd after he died, saying that he was a drug addict. First of all, I know several people that have gone through addiction and have dealt with addiction. Uh, that's not something you need to hang over people's heads or their family members heads after they have died. The way that she came out to attack his character, the same way that I've seen a lot of white people come out and attack uh, characters of those that have been victims of police brutality. Again, she was there to make those people feel comfortable about having those feelings. So if you have a black face that's saying that, then that makes white people who also have those feelings uh, feel okay. Well, Candace Owens said it and she's black. You know how many times I heard people say things like that? So this is really important for people to fully understand. So no, it was totally fine for her to make those statements about black people. It was totally fine for her to make the statements that she made about people that were LGBTQ. That was totally fine for the Daily Wire because that is the audience that they are playing to. That is not to say she didn't get right some things right. That is not to say I don't agree with some of the things that she has said. That being said, though, like I said before, if you can understand the oppression and what's happening to the Palestinian people and you can criticize that, then you also as a black woman, you should understand the oppression and what black people have been through in this in this country and the systemic issues that black people go through, especially considering the fact that you sued your school board and you won that case and it was a discrimination case. And the NAACP, which you criticize, were the ones who helped you win that case. So this is why I tried to tell people before, this is the grift. Like I wasn't joking when I said that. For people who say that I'm grifting, are you kidding me? Do you know that black conservatives make so much more money? Do you know if, if people, if black people, if those of us at RBN really wanted to grift, we would be conservative. That's really where the money is. Not doing what I do when telling you to leave both parties because the whole system is, is corporate and it sucks and it's corrupt. Telling you to vote third party is not a grift. <laughs> it just is what it is. So people have to understand and see things for what they are. Like I said, Candace spent all those years demonizing her own people and the people that actually stabbed her in the back, the people who were wanting to cancel her were her comrades on the right. Uh, and I think that we can learn quite a bit from that. I mean, there's so much to say, right? First of all, the ADL. I mean, Ben Shapiro himself has gone after the ADL. I've seen innumerable Daily Wire segments about the ADL, Censorious, and all that. And yet they're, you know, parting ways with her the very, immediately after the ADL. Incorrectly, by the way, guilt by association smear sir. It says so-and-so is praising so-and-so. So? You can't control that. If you want to attack somebody, then attack what they specifically said. They're using guilt by association. Now, we don't know, again, what the exact thing that led to the breakage between them. But prior to this, there had been not one single con ounce of consternation from Daily Wire leadership, from Candace Owens. She previously had talked about how she had a good relationship inside of the company. And I look, we all know it's because of Israel. And, and, and what yep. a, that's crazy. It's crazy that Candace Owens, who is a conservative commentator, who is working for an organization which was 
supposedly founded on the bedrock of free speech, speaking your mind, you know, saying facts are facts. Uh, what is it? The uh, facts are your feelings, something like that. And by sticking to what she believes in, she is effectively out of a job. And this is an organization, the Daily Wire, which honestly, I don't think they can come back from this. I'm not. Let me pause here for a second. The interesting thing about all of this is that this actually doesn't hurt Candace the way that the Daily Wire would think that it would. If you look at the comments that are on Twitter, I know some of you are not on Twitter, but if you look at the comments that are on Twitter, the comments are heavily in supportive of Candace. And this could split the right. Like for those of you that are conservative, let me know how you feel, because I feel like this could split the right audience between Ben Shapiro, Daily Wire crowd and Candace Owens, because obviously she's not a part of that project anymore. And I've seen a lot of people on Twitter saying if they have to choose between the two, they're going to be team Candace. So, I mean, this is actually helping Candace. This is actually elevating her and making this going to make her even more popular. She'll probably get another book deal. I'm predicting all this. She'll probably become more popular. She'll probably get another book deal. Maybe she'll start her own network, which may be even more, I don't know, may even be more popular than the Daily Wire. You never know. But Candace Owens is not going to be hurt financially. She already is a public figure. People know her around the world. She's not just known here in the United States. She's an international public figure. So she can get a deal anywhere else. And she also has her own YouTube channel. So if anything, this is probably going to help her and hurt the Daily Wire. So Sagar has a point there. Saying that they won't be successful and all that. Listen, I, I don't doubt from a business perspective, can't help but respect it. But from a principal perspective, I think a lot of people are going to remember this. Um, a lot of people are going to see kind of the double talk around cancel culture and free speech and what are real red lines and what aren't red lines. Some of us already saw that Sagar, and we've been calling that out for years. <laughs> we were calling that out for years, buddy. This has been a very, very revealing episode in the last seven, six, seven months or whatever since it's been since October 7th. And this is just the latest casualty here in America. But I think the rift actually does tell you a lot about when you're in the institutional right, what you're allowed to talk about, what you're allowed not to. Never been happy. So think about what Sagar just said when you're in the institutional right. It's not even just the institutional right. Again, both parties support Israel. Both parties, you know, uh, say that Israel was first. You may have members of those parties that don't agree with that. But for the most part, both parties support Israel. Of course, mainstream media pundits are also uh, attacking Candace. This is interesting. This guy here, Ian Hayworth, you need to see who he's associated with. Ian here, words in DC Examiner, Newsweek. So he works for Newsweek, Telegraph, New York Post, just to give you an idea of who he is. Candace Owens is a master of setting fires and complaining about the heat. I'm finally fee free, question mark. She could have quit any time. Bashing your employers while still cashing a paycheck is the lowest of the low, especially for the most vapid thought leader in our movement. So again, this guy works with the New York Post. So just keep in mind, there have been a number of people, a part of mainstream media that have been attacking her on Twitter uh, or have been basically applauding the fact that the Daily Wire has decided to part ways uh, with her. We can go on to the next screen, uh, Eric, when you're ready. But I think this is a very... Uh, a, a, a telling moment. I think Candace has realized there's just certain groups that you apparently can't say those things about when you're working for another company or you're part of another company. Um, I will tell you guys this. There are some of us that have been contacted uh, by mainstream media outlets or affiliates or contacted by other groups to be a part of said unsaid project. <laughs> I'm not going to name any names, but there are some of us in independent media that have been contacted by these groups and we have decided not to participate. And this is the reason. 
the censorship thing is real. Uh, I remember seeing what happened to Kim Iverson with Rising. I remember seeing what happened with Katie Halper uh, with Rising. I remember we saw what happened with Don Lemon, Tucker Carlson, Mehdi Hassan, uh, now Candace Owens. There's a reason why some of us refuse to take that path. And we could make more money if we did. But we wouldn't have the same freedoms that we do now. I mean, I can say what I want on here for the most part, as long as I'm following, <laughs> you know, the YouTube guidelines. Uh, but the reality is, if I were to go and work for someone else, and I would be working for them, the reality is, then they would be my boss. And I would have to adhere to the policies and the rules that they have. And I wouldn't be able to speak as freely as I do on here. There's some things I think you think some things I say on here that I could not say, <laughs> right? So I think we are going to see more people move into this path. Like Don Lemon has done it. Tucker Carlson has done it. Maybe Candace, Car uh, Candace Owens will get an offer from Elon to, you know, produce a show for Twitter, just like Tucker Carlson. If I was her, I would reject that. <laughs> Elon can be a little unstable. Um, but I just think there's something about just not having a having a boss over you in this media space and someone telling me I don't appreciate what you said about this subject or I don't appreciate, you know, what you're saying about the state of Israel or I think you need to just tone it down a little bit. Like no. I don't want that. <laughs> so there are a number of us that chose not to go that path. I think that Candace thought at that point when she decided to be a part of Daily Wire that they truly were about free speech. But some of us have been saying for years that it happens on both sides. It just happens about social or excuse me, different social issues. But both sides participate in cancel culture. Democrats and Republicans participate in cancel culture. It's just about different issues. And so I think that this is a very revealing moment, though, for the Daily Wire, because that's what they were supposedly founded on. Very interesting. Very interesting. Someone made a statement that she would try to crawl back to the black community. I don't think that would go too well. My husband asked me earlier, he said, do you think she'll change any of her other positions now that she's not with them? I don't know. I doubt it. I feel like she does have a base. I feel like her audience at the Daily Wire will follow her for the most part. Uh, and I think that if she were to change her position about other issues, I don't know. I think she could lose part of that audience. I don't know. She is known as, you know, a black conservative woman. And mm -hmm. I don't know how that would go. It's interesting though. She was just on the breakfast club before all this happened, before she was removed, she was just on the breakfast club. And I noticed in that interview, they didn't really push back on some of Candace's talking points that really should have been pushed back on. It's a common thing I've seen with the breakfast club. They bring people on there. People say things that are incorrect and they don't push back on it at all. It's really weird. It's really weird, but um, she'll be fine. That being said though, I do not agree with people being deplatformed. And I told you guys, I've said this about people that I disagree with. I didn't agree with Jackson Hinkle being deplatformed. You know, I don't agree with Garland Nixon being deplatformed on Twitter. He's still locked out. I don't agree with those things. So what do we do about this, right? What do we do? The fact that Zionism is this big and this powerful that it can just remove people just from their jobs, from their careers, put pressure on the people who own those networks. Like, what do we do about that? And I think we really need to figure out a way to answer that question because it's getting to that point.